Okay, well, today was not pleasant. All right, day two. Halfway through day two. Okay, I'm starting to reef out some of the uh, paying, uh, which is the putty on top of the cotton caulking um, on a boat. The cotton that's jammed in the joints is called caulking, and the stuff that basically that seals that in, which used to be white lead, uh, is called paying or seam compound, I suppose. Anyway, um, there's only two bad joints on the boat, maybe three. Uh, I don't know what this plank is called because this boat has a really hard chine. If you look along the edge here, you can see that the hull comes down and turns really very, very steeply uh, into, the, into the bottom of the hull. It's almost flat bottomed at the stern. Anyway, this joint and the two joints, both sides of this turning board are really bad. Um, they're basically full of silicone. Um, and these are the planks that are not very happy. Sorry, I'm walking on knee pads here. Um, silicone, uh, as seems to be the case with every old wooden boat I've ever seen. It's sort of been emergency paid with silicone, which really doesn't stick to anything over time. Anyway, um, fortunately the actual caulking, the cotton, is still in there and in relatively good shape. I might try to find an iron so I can tighten it up a little bit. A caulking iron, which is basically a very broad, sort of flat, screwdriver looking thing you can hit with a mallet that drives the caulking in. Um, but on the whole, I'm not too, too worried. I don't know what I'm going to repay with. Um, I have an assortment of materials and uh, we'll talk about that a little more. But actually, the boat is in much better shape than I thought. Everything on the bottom is wonderful. There's no ugly seams down there at all. There's no ugly planks. There's a lot of paint to scrape off. I don't think this, I think this boat was painted 10 times since the last time it was actually scraped. But the, the way the hull works and everything, I mean the, the keel and all, looks really good. So here we go, day three, and uh, got a bunny here today, which is helping a lot too, because we're prepping the um, top sides for paint tomorrow. Uh, all the bright work has been sanded. The top sides are mostly sanded. We have some work down here to do on the bow. I think I've talked to you about before. But uh, mainly what it is time now is for a little bit of a break. All great yachtsmen drink Guinness, don't they? Cheers. Mm -hmm. See ya. All right then, end of day three. A lot of work, a lot of sanding. My buddy from the marina helped me out a lot today and did the bulk of the... Uh, miserable. Immiserable, I know. Did the bulk of the sanding um, to prep the hull. Uh, we got some uh, filler on these um, bleeders to cover over the soft caulking that was underneath. I'm really sort of pleased. It's pretty slick, a lot of work. So it's soft caulking that seals well against the bleeding screws and then filler over the top to make sure they stay hard. Uh, so I'm pleased with that. Just enough um, marine caulking to uh, Cicloflex uh, to get up to where we're going to paint the white because I still have to finish um, cleaning up these seams. But on the whole, we're pretty much prepped for the topside paint, which is uh, classic bright sides. Actually, I'm using a, a Petit product, which is also a polyurethane, which is apparently exactly the same as Interlux bright sides, which is a product I really, really like. So this will be the last time you see Kiora, or even just a shadow of it. Uh, this boat will not be Kiora 3 in the future. Not quite sure what it will be yet, although I have a suspicion. Anyway, we're going to uh, clean up and uh, have a few more guineas. Cheers. Uh, big red boogers, probably. Did the bulk of the uh, scraping of the bottom. Um, no fun. No fun at all. I knew it wouldn't be. Um, the upside of it is that I was able to give a pretty good look at what's going on on the bottom and it's in really great shape, really great shape, which is nice. Um, the garbage seam, which I knew was a problem. You could see a couple of dribbles here and there maybe, maybe not. Um, it was leaking uh, bilge water out ever since I hauled it. So I've, uh, I've raked that out and, uh, and uh, reefed it out and uh, I'll get some caulking in there. Um, probably more of the Secoflex 291 that I've been using on these other joints. Um, it shouldn't be too sticky. In other words, it shouldn't be too hard to remove 
and subsequent to repairs, but it should do a relatively good job of sealing up for now. I'm sort of cheating. A real wooden boat is caulked with cotton. In this case, this boat is oakum, and then paid with just a paying compound that's not intended to actually seal the boat up. But I don't really feel like reefing out all the oakum right now and recocking. In other words, with oakum or cotton, and then paying with a paying material. So I'm using a high deck. Uh, uh, urethane product, which I really believe in urethane for some reason. It's been good to me. And that'll do for the next couple of years until I have a chance to do this properly. But it's going to leak an awful lot less than it did. And uh, I'm looking for a shower, like a really long one. I'm going to have a $4 shower. See you later. I haven't had an update in a couple of days because I'm just working flat out trying to get this poor thing going. Um, I think I might have mentioned that basically there's three seams that I'm giving uh, attention to. This one, these two at the hard chine, and the garboard seam, which is really my biggest problem. Um, it was full of silicone and loose, and water was pouring out of it. And in this section right through here, uh, it's right underneath the engine, and oil was pouring out of it because there had been oil in the bilge for a long, long time. There isn't any more, but plenty down. So, um, I packed it with uh, with caulking, uh, with uh, Sikaflex 291, which is not a bad product, and uh, it just didn't stick. I pulled it right back out. In fact, this looks like something that's been in there for 10 years, and I pulled it out going, ooh, well, it's been in there for two days, and I pulled it out going, ooh. And you can see all this water on the ground. It's because it was pouring. You can see dribbles uh, out for this six-foot section of the garbage scene. Well, what I should have done in the first place is caulk it, caulk it properly, caulk it with cotton, which is what I'm doing now. I uh, pulled all the silicone-y sort of cyclaflex stuff out and uh, all the way along till it was really good and solid. And in fact, I could tell now that it's shallow and there's good oakum still in there in both directions. But right through this section, it was the oakum was all just yucky and falling out. So I'm caulking it with cotton. The cotton I'm using is actually just strings from a cotton mop. You buy it for four bucks at the hardware store, and you get nice uh, 18 inch sections of, of uh, rolled cotton. And I'm just driving it in, I don't have a caulking iron, I have little bits of shingles with the end cut off. Um, you make do with what you can. Anyway, it stopped leaking, it stopped leaking right away. Uh, that's how boats are made <laughs> caulked with cotton, and then the paying over is not supposed to hold the water in. And I know I knew that all along, but I was trying to get this done quickly. And there's no sense doing it quickly and then leaking like a sieve. So uh, I'm actually very pleased that I've taken the time to do this properly. The bottom is already painted. Um, another coat this afternoon and then another coat tomorrow on the top sides. And we're launching on Monday. It's Friday now. And uh, just this little thing to get done. And uh, But I'm really glad I took it apart and redid it because I would have been feeling sick about that. Anyway, let's get at it. Cheers. There are a few things as satisfying as peeling off masking tape to reveal a perfectly straight painted line. Anyway, it's always good fun. The trick is not getting too much paint on your hands. See ya. So I put the swim grid back on and um, these brackets are a bit chintzy. I mean they're stainless steel and they're not bad. And they're nice big half inch stainless steel bolts. Um, the swim grid itself is a fiberglass modernized something or other. So in time I'll build a new teak swim grid. But in the meantime this one's just going back on. But there had been, I think I might have mentioned, some uh, galvanic rot um, from electrolysis from the stainless steel against the wood here. Uh, so I'm going to separate them out. and Or do the best I can. And I've got to seal these holes. And various caulkings and things like that, even Sequelflex. I just don't like anything that's sort of rubbery silicone based. seems to stick for a while, even though I have it all over the bottom. But anyway, hopefully that'll do the trick. But here, I think it's a perfect candidate for one of my favorite products, and that's butyl tape. I love this stuff. It is a plasticky, rubbery stuff. For those of you who are familiar with it, it's dirt cheap. It's like $5 a roll, and uh, it never hardens. And it can be... I'm going to wrap it around the base of the bolt. I'll show you in a minute how I do that. And I'm going to lay it onto the face of the stainless steel bracket so that it's um, electrically isolated 
mostly from the wood. Probably not from the holes of the wood, but we'll do what we can. Anyway, let's get some tape on. Cheers. Okay, so here's the butyl tape in place. I'm hoping you can see it. Uh, can't see in the camera very well, but anyway, I wrap butyl tape around both bolts and uh, strips down the face of the bracket. And uh, all you got to do is wrap a whole bunch around a bolt or whatever it is you're bedding, and it'll just deform into place in time. Nope, oh, lost a bit off of here. This is probably a two handed job. I'll put the camera away. See ya. Well, it's basically done. It's uh, evening of uh, the last day before launch again. Launching in the morning. Well, that's the afternoon tomorrow at 2. I have to put a little bit of bottom paint on where the pads were. And the top sides are finished, two coats. The hull is finished, two coats. The caulking's all done. The trim grid's back on. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it was a lot of work. It was nine days on the hard, uh, which is about four more than I was hoping. But the boat is twice as good as I was hoping, even better really. And I also love the design. Um, I'm really, really thrilled. A lot of this work will hold me off for a long, long time. Um, obviously I have to get back at the garbage seam at some point, year or two. Uh, I'll be able to sense by how much she's taking on water. Because I think that's the only place really she's going to take on any significant water. And she won't for a while, but we'll see. Um, it's been really a great experience. Just saying, uh, Got the swim grid back on, so I thought I'd come and show you. The swim grid was a real mess. It's this ugly fiberglassy thing made to look like uh, basically the same nice curved shape that a monk a swim grid would have. Um, so in many senses, it's quite nice. It has this uh, uh, live well in it, which I have absolutely no use for, but it's kind of neat. I guess you could keep a beer cool in it. Anyway, uh, in time, I'll replace it with a uh, with a proper teak. So I'm good, but there's a few thousand dollars I don't feel like spending today. Anyway, so it was a little tough to get all the bolts lined up again, but it's basically back on, and uh, not much left to do. Maybe a beer. Cheers. It's an amazing thing to take something so beautiful and give it even just this small bit of maintenance to extend its life a little bit longer. I'm, I'm totally in love with this boat and expect it to be my home and uh, life for a long time to come. After we launched, we took the opportunity to go for a short little cruise up to Salt Spring Island. Uh, we stayed in Fulford Harbor, which really isn't that far away, but it was wonderful to just spend a couple of days on the anchor uh, alongside the cute little village of Fulford Harbor, uh, and it really just capped off um, the nine or ten days of hard work with a few days of taking it easy.